Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's weekly video is going to be on flow in your reef. I'm going to talk about first of all the definition of it and then the different turnover rates when it comes to different types of corals. So I hope you enjoy this video and find it interesting and educational. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and that little notification bell. So let's take a deep dive into it. Hold on. Okay, so first of all, what is the definition of flow in your reef? Well, flow in your reef is the amount of water in gallons that is moved per hour by a piece of equipment. Now flow is important because it helps remove gases from the water that would otherwise compromise the health of fish, corals, and invertebrates. When fish breathe, they take in oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Now, the CO2 that is exhaled will build up in the water and eventually affect the chemical balance in the tank, including pH and alkalinity. Those definitely will be affected. Now, reef aquarium flow or turnover is also highly dependent on the type of corals you're keeping. For example, SPS corals require significantly higher flow to thrive then, of course, LPS and soft corals. Now, additionally, there are different types of flow, including direct, gyre, and turbulent flows. Now, another benefit of higher water flow is nutrient transport. Higher water flow moves waste and rotting food from the sand and rock to the water column and surface. When brought out, filters and overflows can pull this waste out of the tank, helping to manage nitrates and lead to a stable reef aquarium. Without flow, the natural reefs and of course your reef tanks would go into what's called stagnation. Nowadays, you have different types of water makers in which they tend to replicate the natural reefs. For instance, in my case, I use the reef crest mode on my Ecotec uh, Marine MP10. Increasing water movement will tend to help with dead spots located in your reef. Now, the turnover rate refers to the number of times the entire water volume of your aquarium is moved. Example, if you have a 50 gallon aquarium and a power head or wave maker with a flow rate of let's say 200 gallons per hour, the turnover rate would be 200 gallons per hour divided by the 50 gallons which will equal four times per hour. Now the needed flow rate for a reef tank should be between 500 to 1,000 gallons per hour of flow at a minimum. Though you may be able to get away with 10 times turnover rates, it's strongly encouraged to aim for 20 times turnover or higher, taking into consideration the type of corals you're keeping and the location of the corals. For instance, uh, this I went ahead into a research and I found out different things in reference to different corals. SPS turnover rate should be between 40 and 100. And then LPS or soft corals, of course, less. Now, other considerations include obstacles just as rocks or corals, including coral growth in the way of the water flow or even just in case of too many fish leading to larger amounts of gas exchange needed. Reef, re, uh, reef aquariums have additional gas exchanges, nutrient transport, and other flow rate needed. These needs strongly depend on the type of corals you want to keep in your reef tank. Proper flow is one of the most important components besides lighting to, su uh, to success or failure when keeping corals. And then finally, as a whole, you should aim at obtaining a turbulent water flow so as to try to keep the dead spots at a minimal. Now here I thought I'd shoot uh, different angles when it comes uh, targeting today's topic, which is uh, flow in your reef. Of course, if you notice on the middle top, the two exhausts coming out from the pump, right there you have a lot of flow. That flow, as you look closely on the surface, that uh, does produce what's called um, gas exchange which means that it's giving its uh, 
aerating the uh, water as we speak. So oxygen is being implemented into the actual reef. So you have that in, in this scenario, in this case, on this uh, Innovator Marine 40. Then on the left-hand side, upper section right there, you have the MP10. Now that one, as I was mentioning before on the topic, I have it on brief crest mode. I found out uh, checking, you know me, Eddie the researcher, uh, checking different videos and doing a little research, the most common uh, mode or setting, shall we call it, for the um, wave makers by uh, Ecotech Marine, the most common is the reef crest because it actually gives like if, you know, talking about a reef, of course, in a reef environment, it's the waves, the, the breaking of the waves in the reef going in and out, in and out. So this is the most common uh, setting that you would actually have when it comes to uh, reef keeping. Okay, now here in this shot on the lower quadrant, uh, more or less what I'm going to explain, you can appreciate better by looking at this section of the tank. So, as I mentioned just previously, I have the flow coming out of the exhaust uh, from the pump, and then I have the MP10 on the left. Okay, now, what I was talking about that is very important, that you should have a turbulent type of effect in the water column. Of course, I'm using reef crest mode, as I mentioned uh, not too long ago. What's happening here is that between the MP10 going from the left to the right and then you have the two exhausts coming out, it does create a turbulent type of uh, flow in the middle of the water column, in the middle of the tank. So then you have the water from the left going and plus the one coming out of the exhausts going, creating a turbulent flow going towards the right panel of the tank and then going down. And then when it goes down on the right, uh, between the exhausts of the pump and then the intake, of course, of the MP10, intake and, and exhaust of it, then it creates like a circle of, of water, like coming down, like uh, let's say from here and from here and then going this way. So in this shot, uh, you can notice and appreciate that by looking, for instance, at the Duncan. If you look at the Duncan coral, on the right-hand side, you notice the wave effect that that coral has. And then if you go towards the left and you look at the pipe organ or organ pipe coral, you also see the effect of the current coming from the right and then going towards the left. But when the reef crest mode, when it actually goes less or more, then you see that behavior changes a little bit. And then here on the central area, you see the effects of the uh, turbulence, the turbulent water flow, again, coming from the MP10 on the left, and then creating a turbulence in the middle from the exhaust coming out of the tank. So this is the effect that you can also appreciate it by looking at the central area, the movement of it, how it you'll notice the behavior, it, it moves a little more than a little less, that's when the reef crest mode kicks in more or less, like if you picture yourself out there in a natural reef, how you see the water coming in and going out on the actual reefs. So this is what you're, uh, the behavior that you're looking at as we speak. You, you see that? That's what I'm talking about. So that's the turbulence that I'm talking about that is created between the bombardment of uh, flow from the MP10 and the bombardment of the flow from the two exhausts from the pump. There you go, you see? That's telling me that the reef crest mode actually was at its high end right now as we speak, then it, it ramps down. So that's what you need to see when it comes to keeping a reef aquarium and today's topic flow. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it educational, interesting, and fun. If you did so, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And next to it, hit that little notification bell. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing, 
Thank you for watching and until next time, bye-bye.